Welcome to another edition of the Gridiron Report. I'm Jerry Johnson. I'm joined by the mighty Joe Yeager. Well, mighty Joe, after that 37-16 loss at Washington State, there's a lot of concern from the Red Raider faithful, and I, I believe rightfully so. I mean, Texas Tech just flat out has not played good through two games. And I think there's a variety of factors at play, and we've received a lot of questions uh, from the fans and our customers, our insiders, inside the Red Raiders, about what's going on. And I think you know, we've discussed that there's three factors that – we'd like to see we think must be improved if Texas Tech is going to improve overall and salvage a good season. And first off, to me, they got to fix the penalty problem. Uh, too many penalties, 21 penalties through two weeks. I think they rank, 100, they rank 126 nationally. Uh, McGuire said 12 or 13 of those are pre-snap penalties. And that, I, I will never be okay with that. And of all the people I've met in football, knowledgeable people who – just for my own personal value, who I trust the most in terms of football knowledge, their opinion is my dad. <laughs> Growing up and playing, he played college ball, all that. He's just a very succinct, smart dude, and he loves football. And he always taught me, since I was, you know, could walk basically, that penalties is a reflection of coaching. And I'm never gonna, I've never seen anything to change my mind on that. And if anything, I've only like tripled down on that. And. To me, and I asked Coach McGuire about it on Monday, and uh, you know he said they're bringing in officials to every practice, every portion of practice, and, all, and I think that's a good idea. He said they did that at Baylor when they struggled early uh, in the 2021 season with penalties, but they have to get that turned around. This team, the margin of, uh, for error is just so thin with this team right now uh, that they, especially on offense where a lot of these penalties are occurring, that has to get fixed this week against UNT and moving forward. Yeah, 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 there's, I mean, as you said, margin of error, yeah. you know, is, is, is so small. And, and because of that, I mean, you can talk about all sorts of different aspects of football and say that, I mean, Tech can't afford that stuff, yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean, Tech isn't gonna be blowing people out. Right. You know, especially, I mean, not even against anybody, they're not blowing anybody out. Yeah. Um, let alone once they get into conference play. All right, so I mean, if they're in games at all, it's going to be close games for the most part. Yeah, and you know, penalties are one of those areas where you just can't have it. And the worst of it is the pre-snap, the yeah. effort penalties. You, you can kind of understand, it, yeah, right? holding some, some, stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, or a guy is just flying around and hits a guy a little bit late out of bounds, and he's just, you know, that's hell, I would welcome that. Well, that's going to be one of our yeah. points coming up. Sure. I'll almost welcome that. The go. pre snap. That would be a good segue. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so I mean, uh, that sort of stuff you can put up with. I mean, all that pre snap stuff uh, is just is it mental errors. Yeah. You know, it's an, it, it, this, discipline. Discipline. And it does surprise me a little bit. I mean, I don't remember, maybe you have this on, uh, on the top of your head. Yeah. But Tech wasn't terrible in terms no. of penalties last year, right? Last two years, they were in the better half 55th yeah, and 48th, the first yeah, two yeah, years on the block, which is a reflection of good coaching. Sure. So, what the heck is going on this year? You know, very uh, uh, surprising. And, and, you know, I guess there's a chance uh, that maybe these first two games were a little bit like are going to turn out to be blips on the radar that don't portend a trend, but you can't afford it any further. Right. I mean, you just you can't afford any more of those blips. No. A blip is going to turn into a loss. Yeah. You know, so yeah, yeah I agree completely that they got to get that corrected. Now, another thing that has to get changed, we or figured out, at least I think corrected, is and you wrote about it. I thought it was a great story uh, comparing the No Country for Old Men. Uh, I asked Coach McG uh, McGuire about that as well uh, on Monday, but going for it. Using just the book as, you know, the analytics as, okay, it says go, so we go. And to me, not allowing for uh, the situation, the inefficiency of your own offense, uh, you know, putting your defense in, in trouble that's already struggling, that that kind of thing. Um, and I get the upper like either you're in or you're out with it. Like, Please don't yell at me. I get it in theory. But I also understand that there's a feel for the game. Against Washington State a couple of times, it was like, don't do this. It was clear as day. Like, you know, don't do it. They ended up going one for five. That, that amounted to four turnovers. And you already turned the ball over with four old school regular turnovers as well, including special teams got in on the act to start the game. So you continually put this young defense, inexperienced defense, that has been struggling, uh, you know, with this back against the wall. And it was a recipe for disaster, mind you. So I think 
you need to alter your game plan to what your team is right now. And the team's inefficient on offense and struggling on defense. Punt the ball. You know, go back to old school. Show that you can adapt. Yep, yeah, that's right. And, you know, the, the problem with, with the analytic thing is that it's just it's, it's too simplistic. You know, yeah. I mean, it's looking at football in terms strictly of numbers. Right. You know, and it doesn't take into consideration all those sort of extraneous factors that you mentioned. You know, I mean, uh, you've got to have an appreciation of your team specifically and the opponent specifically yeah. and how everybody is playing right now in things such as injuries. Yeah. I mean, if you're not factoring all that information in when you're making these decisions, then you're making bad decisions. And so, and I, you know, I don't want to go into that too much, but I mean, basically, basically what I just want to see is better game management, better decision making. Uh, if he were to continue to rely exclusively on the book, yeah. now on, and it, it produced fantastic results from here on out, I wouldn't complain. No, of course not. But I don't think that's likely to happen. Right. I think it's a bad idea. So uh, one way or another, however he skins the cat, he's got to do uh, a better job of handling this sort of stuff. And I hope uh, that he's sort of reevaluating, reevaluating, re and reappraising the way he's going about this stuff. Because uh, you do another one in five on fourth yeah. down nonsense again. And again, that's just like the penalties you can't have. You can't have those sorts of turnovers as well. So yeah. uh, something's got to change. One thing that coaches like to do when they're explaining struggles is kind of pick and choose things. And McGuire has mentioned in uh, 2022, how, you know, if you don't get those, all those, convert all those fourth downs against Texas, you don't beat Texas. And he's right. Uh, and then you go to the Houston game, it was something similar as well that you won in overtime. I don't know if people remember that, but it was a close game, went to overtime. You had to, man, there was like a fourth and 22 that you converted. Those are true facts. And I agreed with him at the time, but each season, each team, each season is its own monster, as I like to call it. And you could even go further, like each week, all that. Uh, and you can get cliche of each play and every you know, each situation. But I think this is why I have a problem with going by the book is each situation is different even within a game. You know, and this team is a different monster than that 2022 team. So I think he needs to approach it different. Doesn't mean he can't go back and be aggressive on four downs or even if sometimes this year say, you know what, I, this feels like the right situation. The numbers back up what I'm feeling. Let's go. But using it as a rule is not working right now. So I mentioned also earlier, uh, I don't really want like this from Texas Tech. I'm just saying I'd like to see some physicality. This is the third thing I think must change if Texas Tech is going to turn this season around and have you know uh, a good season is play with some energy. Play with some, I hate to use the word, but swag. I would love to hear the word swag come back right now because it almost looks like the team's playing scared or afraid to make a mistake, overthinking things. And just not with a lot of joy. This is a fun game. You, man, you, you play football, especially at the level these guys are playing. I mean, you pay a, a heavy price. When we were on, they get paid. All they have all these advantages. I get it, but you pay a heavy price with your time, your body, all, you know, your emotions, all this stuff. So, just to get to play those games, to have, that's the big payoff. And it just seems like they're not having even before like they struggled from the get-go, they seem like they're not having any fun and they're not excited and energy's very low. And I, that's one of the most disappointing things so far through two games. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, uh, they, they look flat. Flat, yeah. You know, and flatness can, or the appearance of being flat can, can come from a lot of different things. You know, right. you, you mentioned them. Uh, uh, you know, part of it, and I'm not saying this is the case, it would be, would be a, a lack of buying. You know, I mean, if, yeah. if, if a team doesn't believe in their coaches, what they're doing, if they don't have a good feeling about their coach, then they're not going to go out there and put a lot of effort. They're not going to play hard. They're not going to be excited. You know, we want to carry the coach off the field right. and get on our shoulders or anything like that. I'm not saying that's the case, but that's one thing that contribute to, contribute to flatness. You also mentioned the confusion. Yeah, I um, think that's what's going on. You know, and, and the confusion leads to last, lack of confidence. You're not confident. You're not playing aggressively. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> we could see that definitely on the defensive side of the ball oh, yeah. in the first game. So at least that is something that you can, you can fix. I mean, you can get the guys, you can teach them better, get them a little bit more experience. Yeah. You know, they get that, they, they start to 
And I think maybe we saw a little bit of that on defense early, uh, early against yeah. Washington State. Um, but uh, you got to keep on building on that, and hopefully that's going to fix it because these guys just learn more, become more confident, and become more aggressive. But uh, it definitely is something that's showing up right now. And, uh, you know, again, like you say, it's got to change. Yeah, I just want to say that I agree with you, that buy-in, that is something that leads to a team coming out flat or not playing hard I mean, or a lack of buy-in. I don't believe right now that's the case. Now, I mean, this season continues the way it is, that could be the case. I do think, for whatever reason, and I don't think this is like a dumb team or something like that, but it's inexperience and maybe, and I've said this a couple of times already, but simplify things to where these players feel confident in what they're doing, you know, snap to snap, game to game, all of that. And uh, we'll see if they do it. And those are just, hey, it's just two guys' opinions, but we think those are three big factors. If you even correct one of those, I think you'll see a big improvement. Two of them, hey, I think if you change all three of those, then I think you can see a huge leap forward because I do believe there's talent on the team. And unlike a lot of people right now, I do believe in a lot of the coaches on the staff. So, Mighty Joe, great stuff from you as always. Thank you all for watching. Until next time.